Hi folks, I've got a pretty neat knife to show you tonight. I think you're, I think this is this knife is probably the best fixed blade knife for the money currently on the market. I uh, had hoped to show you a fill dressing video um, using this knife, but I uh, through a quirk of fate, I didn't get a deer. I had my chance, chance at a buck, and it didn't turn out. So I just used this knife for the first time tonight, and uh, it kind of inspired me to tell you my impressions of it, and I think you'll find it informative. This is a Martini Model M571, also known as the bait knife. Um, I'll show, show it to you here. It, here's the sheath it comes in. It comes in a cheap plastic sheath, typical of Martinis and Moras. Little tab on the end here, one guy said his lasted four years before it broke. He wore it every day. But for a pack sheath, it's great. It has a little drain hole on the end. Um, I put this uh, tiny piece right here you can see of a uh, um, bicycle inner tube over the bottom. Because when I'm wearing this hunting, my coat covers the top half and brush can scrape against the bottom. And you can hear it's noisy. Put on the rubber and it silences it. So... Uh, it adds almost nothing to it as far as weight. This sheath weighs about probably less than an ounce. So, uh, but it does a trick. It has very good retention. You can just shake this all day. It's not going to come out of there. So it's a neat little sheath. It's a hard sheath. It's not, some people say it's really soft and the knife could break, cut through. Impossible. It's a really good sheath. It's better than a Mora Clipper sheath. Okay, here's the bait knife. The Model M571. Um, the knife has a nice, good size. I have small hands, but there's plenty of room, even for somebody with a, a large hand, plenty of room on, to grip it. It's got a 3 and uh, 3 eighths inch uh, carbon steel blade. Um, hardness is said to be around 55, 56 Rockwell, um, which is on the soft side. So I was kind of skeptical as, about this, as the edge holding of this knife. I love the red handle. It's easy to see when you lay, if you lay it down out in the woods. Uh, however, as the light goes, the sun goes down, as the sun sets and things darken, red, even this handle is kind of almost a reddish orange, it uh, turns blackish. Um, it's not like a, a fluorescent handle. Fluorescent orange is probably your best bet for a really unlosable knife because in low light, flure fluorescent orange will glow almost. This thing will turn black. Um, so, but it's still, you got any light out there at all and it's easy to see. It's got kind of a black patina on the blade. Um, beautiful Scandi grind, Scandinavian grind, uh, polished real nicely. This knife out of the box was the sharpest knife I've ever owned. It was way sharper, sharper than my Falkneven uh, WM1. It was sharper than any Mora I've ever owned. Sharper than the Clipper, sharper than a few other Moras I've owned um, out of the box. Um, it, uh, it really impressed me. But again, it doesn't matter how sharp it is if it doesn't hold its edge. I've found that if a knife is really sharp, though, out right out of the box, it's going to hold its edge. It's usually been properly heat treated. And I know Martini heat treats properly, so I wasn't too worried about it. But uh, overall, the grip feels really good. However, it's a little slippery, a little slick. It's got kind of a dimple texture to it. It's hard plastic, but still, I feel that's a tiny bit on the slippery side. But when you're wearing leather gloves, or rubber gloves. I put on some rubber gloves just to try it. Um, you get a real good grip. Um, the uh, the uh, spine right along here is a little bit rough. Tiny bit. It's nowhere near as rough as on a Mora Clipper, but it's a tiny bit rough up on top here. Uh, I found out tonight that you, if you buy this knife, you might want to take some sandpaper or some uh, um, steel wool and go over this. Smooth it out a little bit. Because when you're, if you're going to do some wood carving with this, like I did tonight, you, it's, you're going to want to power up and put your thumb on top of the blade. And if you look at my thumb, it might still look a little sore. Um, tonight I spent 45 minutes carving hardwood with this knife. Um, I found a sapling, and it might be ash. And I used a Victorinox uh, fireman knife to strip all the bark off of it. And I think I'll... I'll switch right now for my video and show you just a tiny clip of uh, the results of stripping the bark off of this uh, eight-foot um, ash uh, sapling or whatever it is. It's a hardwood sapling. 
one hour ago this was a really nice sapling out there but it was slated to be uh, cut down in the spring so when they're they're going to put in a flood control project so I took this Swiss Army fireman great little carving knife and uh, actually a big carving knife for the for Swiss Army it's a 111 millimeter knife you can see this uh, pretty heavy duty sapling is now an eight seven foot eleven inch long boar European boar spear handle in the making Look at all those shavings here I'll just set this on the side here for a second I'll just show you you see this thing just takes off beautiful shavings right on down right on down really nice shavings you can also start start a shaving then grab it and pull on it I did that to get the bark off just pulled strips of bark off it took about 25 minutes or so and had all the bark on it off of it all right get the idea really neat really gonna be a great spear when it's done there you go, Swiss Army Fireman. The little hiker model works great. I cut the tree down. There we go. Using that saw blade. I have to clean those blades up tonight. Okay, we're back. I showed, showed you that little clip. Um, tonight, I wanted to reduce the diameter of the sapling even more before I cut the rest of those knots off of it. So I thought that would be a good test for this knife. So for 45 minutes, I sat like this carving away, carving big strips off of that, off of that, and small, small pieces. It was so hard, extremely hard test on this blade, and just to see what the edge holding would do. When I was done with it, I washed it off, and I looked under uh, magnification, and it does seem to have some edge degradation, um, but, you know, not as much as my thumb. But I'll show you. This surprised me. This surprised me. Well, there, you can see. You can see. You can go real slow. Wait now. It's right there. There is a little, right there you can see a little catch in the paper. There is a little bit of edge degradation, but not much. It's still pretty darn sharp for 45 minutes worth of hard use. Really hard carving away. You can see that. The darn knife is a good knife. Now, I got the same type of performance out of a carbon Mora clipper. I had to, I had to sharpen the clipper. I'm like, this has never been sharpened. This knife is right out of the factory. That's a factory edge. Um, but uh, so there was a there were a few maybe tiny micro rolls after 45 minutes of use But overall I have no doubts now that this is going to fill dress and take the hide off of a deer without any trouble And I was I found no hot spots in the handle at all Just the only issue was putting so much pressure on the spine with my thumb um, When I put on a pair of gloves no trouble then I just continued on without any problems But again if that's a little bit smoother That'll take care of that. The tang extends to about right here. If you look online, look up the M571 Martini, you can find a cutaway. And it goes, it's about a two-thirds tang. It's about twice as long as the Mora Clippers tang. Um, and it's a rat tail, rat tail tang, kind of um, half thickness. But it's a, it's a stronger knife than a clipper. Um, one thing you can consider doing is taking a piece of inner tube like this. This is too small a diameter. A little larger diameter than this real fine stuff. I, I have a racing bicycle, so I have thin tires. Slide it over the handle, and you can it would fit tight. You could rubberize the whole front of this and leave the red tang um, for uh, visibility. Leave that exposed. That would help uh, give a better grip without gloves. But uh, um, overall, I didn't have any. It, my hand never slipped a, a single time. It, it did have good a good grip on the knife. Just the, the rubber, I, I prefer a rubber finished almost, or rubber gripped almost all my knives. It has just a hint of a blade guard right here. So it's kind of, it's a finish knife, and kind of in the finish, usually the finish knives don't have any blade guard at all. But just enough, never did my finger feel like it was going to go onto the blade. Not once. That was really carving hard. Um, so I was happy with that. Um, overall, um, with my small hands, this, uh, this grip is a perfect size. 
most people would find this grip a little on the small side. That's why, uh, you know, maybe rubber coating it would would probably help out in that regard. Uh, knife, with the sheath, I, I threw it on the scale, weighs about two ounces even. I didn't have a real accurate scale, but close enough, I'm within a few grams. And uh, so it's a two ounce, it's, it's so light, you put it on your belt, you can't even feel it. Overall, I think it's a heck of a knife. I paid $10, $9.99. But for $10, bucks, uh, sure, the Mora Clipper um, in carbon steel can be had from Smoky Mountain right now for $8.99. So a dollar less than this. But uh, to be honest with you, I think the M571 is the better of the two knives. This is my opinion. It's got This blade is so nice that uh, people say it's hand-forged. I don't believe that. I, I have a hard time believing that. I think, I think it's machine-made. But they say it's a hand-forged blade. Whatever, whatever, it's uh, 3 and 3 eighths inches long, which uh, mine is anyway, which is a perfect length for field dressing deer and small game. And uh, it's used a lot. People will grind the handles off. And they'll rehandle it with fat, with curly birch or something and put a brass guard on the front. So it's used um, as the basis of a lot of custom knives. Uh, it's that nice of a blade. It's really a nice, nice blade. When you figure you got to pick the knife up for 10 bucks, how can you go wrong? But again, 45 minutes of very hard carving does not uh, uh, tell you everything about a knife. It was long enough to let me know that the handle has no hot spots. It was long enough to know that the knife... Uh, retain its factory sharpness and I'll get this knife sharper than from the factory when I when I sharpen it you can see that still sharp it also suffered one like I said one tiny maybe micro roll somewhere along the lines but overall I was pretty impressed for 10 bucks I um, I've got knives uh, like I said my my felt even is probably 80 90 dollars right right now and is not as sharp a knife my VG10 in the Falcon even might hold its heads better than this. Um, nobody has, uh, I don't know um, if uh, Martini has pu publicized the steel they use. They say it's carbon steel. Um, I'm guess it's, guessing it's probably fairly close to 1095. Uh, even if it is softer, it holds, it seems to hold, just like the Martini uh, stainless steel knives, like the little classic, it seems to hold its edge as well as uh, the harder uh, um, Mora knives just, to, just as well and uh, maybe a little better ergonomics than the Mora knives a little greater strength it's worth 10 bucks look it up, I think you'll like it until next time, we'll see you later